Good evening, and welcome to the Whitewater Wind Down. I'm Edie Fernay alongside Peyton Walls, welcoming you back from spring break. Edie, how was your spring break? It was good. I got to let us spend a lot of time with my dog Trudy mm -hmm. and my family, which was so great Trudy. because I haven't seen them in a while. Yes, she is my two-year-old little yellow lab, and she's the sweetest thing. I have a yellow lab. What? My yellow lab's like ten, oh and my he's God. like, oh, my yellow lab is kind of sick, but mm -hmm. it's fine. I'm enjoying. I enjoyed my spring break with him. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go on. So no. Trudy? Yes, okay. Trudy and I are like best buddies. We always uh -huh. like hang out. She uh -huh. sleeps in the same bed as me. If I'm That's taking so a nap, sweet. she'll take a nap. So it was really nice to see her again, even though I already miss her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about you? Oh, my spring break was so cool. Like the day we left for spring break, it snowed like crazy, which sucked yeah. to drive in three hours all the way back home. Mm -hmm but it was really good for skiing. And mm -hmm. my family's like really big into snow skiing. And so we were loving, loving the snow. Mm -hmm. And I got to see some of my friends from high school. It was my friend's 20th birthday. So we had a little party celebrating that. And then I got to see some of my friends that are like still in high mm -hmm. school. So shout out to Addie and Grace. <laughs> I miss them, but yeah, I'd say it's pretty good spring break. Mm -hmm. I went to a lot of like stores, like malls. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm not an online shopper at all. Mm -hmm. Like. Eh. I like to go in person and like window shop and browse right. around, get something to eat. It's an experience. Like, yeah. Go for the experience, not right. just for the stuff. Like the whole I get thing. It. And I really didn't get anything, which always happens to me. Like I'll get like oh, a little boba tea or something like mm -hmm. that. But that's it. But I still like you know the experience of walking around. Me and my boyfriend saw a movie together. Oh. So it was good. Yeah, I feel like I either spend way too much money or I don't buy anything mm -hmm. at all. But once I make that first purchase, I'm like, all right, I'm already here. Right. It's like a Might as well start buying things. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's so crazy that school is almost over. Like spring break is over. Yeah. A few, like a month. Mm -hmm. Like that just blows my mind. Yeah. It feels like I just moved in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like. I went and looked back on my camera roll with my friends a couple of days ago and I was like, we really just became friends like instantly right when school yeah, started. Yeah, that is so true. Like mm -hmm. the friends that I have now, I've known for less than a year. Yeah. And now they're like my best friends. Right. Like, it seems it's crazy like, to me. Like I've known them my whole life. And I was actually talking to my friend. I was like, how have we not run out of things to talk about yet? Mm -hmm. Because we just sit and talk like all the time, which I really enjoy. Yeah. Coming up on the Whitewater Wind Down, we have a story about the Whitewater community. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. What does it mean to be a Warhawk? It means allowing myself to dream big and think outside the box. Pushing the limits of what I think is possible. Seeing ideas through from start to finish. Collaborating with professors and peers. And seizing opportunities in the community to put my knowledge to use. I'm studying abroad. Learning another language. And listening to the stories of others. I'm making lifelong friends and fearlessly sharing my gifts with the world. As a Warhawk, I stay balanced, take great care of myself, and get out of my comfort zone. I refuse to let the past determine my future, and I'm taking confident steps in the direction of my dreams. Sometimes it doesn't make sense, and other times it couldn't be more exciting. But I will keep my goals in mind and never quit. Because that, that's the Warhawk way. Whitewater Bookstore is your one-stop shop for apparel, textbooks, and technology. Stop in for a wide selection of gifts from our alumni, family, and name brand sections. Need to purchase or rent a textbook? Head downstairs to Textbook Services. Check out our new custom shop and create personalized apparel for your organization. Need a charger, laptop, or headphones? Our new technology section has everything you might need. For more information and bookstore hours, visit uwwhitewaterbookstore.com. The University Center, or UC, is at the heart of campus, both figuratively and literally. Located in the center of campus, the UC is a place where all students are encouraged to thrive, relax, and have fun. Whether you're getting food at one of the many dining locations,
or playing some billiards, striking out in bowling, or just hanging out in the main lounge area. Everyone brings something to the UC, and it has something for everyone. An Oklahoma high school student's story has been shared all around the nation to bring attention to the severity of bullying, especially towards minorities. UWW-TV's Tori Carter and Abby Hamachek have more on the story. We are the light, and we can make things different and better and see people with their light. A candlelit vigil for Nex Benedict was held on March 20th at Kravitz Lakefront Park. Nex was an indigenous high school student who used both he, him, and they, them pronouns. They were constantly bullied at school due to their gender identity. Next collapsed at home on February 8th. The death was recently ruled a suicide. It's important to acknowledge everyone on our campus, in our community, and around the world for who they are. And I'm grateful that tonight we are able to come together and support one another and tell people that they're not alone. Organizations such as Whitewater Unites Lives, Whitewater Pride, Impact, and Alpha Delta Phi Society put together this vigil to honor Nex as well as spread awareness towards this issue. We're all very desensitized to this happening over and over again. Um, and we kind of get to the point where we don't acknowledge it and don't acknowledge the harm and grief it causes. So I really wanted to bring together the university and the city as a community to process this and talk about it and hopefully turn that rage and harm into action rather than just watching it happen and moving on. Even if it's far away, there's mirrors of it happening here. The city of Whitewater, as well as UW-Whitewater, have countless resources for students and community members. This event showcased the support individuals have and where to get help if needed. Talk, sit in silence if you need to, but do what you need to process as a community and as yourselves with people who support you. For UWW-TV News, I'm Abby Hamacher. Thank you, Abby and Tori, on that heart-wrenching story. I... I think it's really cool that the Whitewater community could come together mm -hmm. like this and just celebrate the life of someone who lost theirs to bullying mm -hmm. and feeling ostracized for who they believe that they are, which is really unfortunate. Yeah. I'm glad that a lot of places on campus, like you said, are so welcoming and kind and have different areas where everyone truly does feel like they belong and no one feels unsafe. Mm -hmm. Whitewater is really good at creating resources where people who do feel like they are being bullied or ostracized can like find mm -hmm. people to help them and find hope. I recently just had the opportunity to talk to one of the counselors at the um, health center here mm -hmm. and visit the relaxation room. And I just feel like there's so many opportunities that people mm -hmm. don't know more about. So if you are struggling. Yeah. We'll be right back with more on the Whitewater Wind Down. But first, let's take a look at the weekend's weather forecast. The Royal Purple, the best place for all the latest news around the community and campus of UW-Whitewater. 
Here you'll find all different types of weekly news stories, including sports, arts and rec, biz and tech, and even fun and interesting things like trendsetter columns and the tweet of the week. The Royal Purple has a full staff to handle all of your advertising and article needs. Ad managers and sale representatives can help you get your ad in seasonal print issues online at royalpurplenews.com and out on our social media platforms. Editors and journalists would love to write features about your organization and follow-ups about your important events. For more information on student employment opportunities, advertisement services, or anything news, contact the Royal Purple over at capital R, capital P, at uww.edu or give us a call at 262-472-5100. Stop by our office and say hi on campus in McCutcheon Hall, room 113. For all of your local campus community news, check out the Royal Purple here at University of Wisconsin-Whitewater. Here at UWW, we put a lot of emphasis on shaping your involvement. Involvement helps you get to know more people with similar values and goals as yourself. The Student Involvement Office can help you get involved with organizations on campus, or we can help you start a brand new one. So what are you waiting for? It's time to shape your involvement at UWW. If you'd like to learn more, stop by UC127 or contact us at involvement at uww.edu or call 262-472-6217. I'm Brandon Bazinski and this is The World Today on UWW-TV. Construction workers found a statue dating back over 2,000 years in a parking lot in the United Kingdom. Greg Crawley is the construction worker who unearthed the statue. The statue was found in two separate pieces over two weeks and dates back to the 1st or 2nd century. The statue will now be displayed alongside others collected by the 9th Earl at Burglee House, a historical landmark. A volcano in Iceland erupted recently for the fourth time in three months, after almost 800 years of silence. This last eruption being the most powerful one yet, sending orange jets of lava into the sky and into neighboring towns. The eruption opened up a gaping hole in the earth, almost two miles long. The townspeople and the Iceland government had been warned for weeks that magma was accumulating under the ground, making this eruption highly likely. This eruption took place between two highly populated towns, including Iceland's capital city, which was evacuated before the initial eruption. Defense walls have been put up to block the flow, but several buildings and homes have been consumed by the lava. A yellow penguin was discovered by scientists. This penguin is a king penguin who lives on an island called South Georgia, located in the Atlantic Ocean between South America and Africa. The penguin was soon lost in a sea of other king penguins, which makes testing on it completely unlikely. Originally, this strange phenomenon was thought to be caused by a complete or partial lack of melanin or the result of albinism. Throughout this year's winter season, hundreds of manatees gathered together in Orange City, Florida, setting a new record. Being previously endangered, laws have been put into place have helped manatee populations skyrocket. As they herd together during a cold snap, park rangers counted 932 manatees. This was seen as a huge victory considering 40 years ago there was only 49, and just 10 years ago there was less than half of the current population. Federal wildlife ecologists and manatee enthusiasts celebrate this number and prove that the laws established are doing their job. For more updates, check us out at uwwtv.org. I'm Brandon Bazinski, and this has been The World Today on UWW-TV. We'd love to show you what it's like to be a Warhawk. Come on! Yeah. Whitewater. You belong here! Hola. Hey, how are you? Hello. 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 
Udaipur Whitewater International Student Association is a student organization that brings both international students and national students together to share their cultural experience and beliefs. The ISA also collaborates with other student organizations in Udaipur Whitewater. The International Dinner is one of the most unique events that ISA have for every spring semester, which serves all kinds of food from different countries, and it invites students to show their talent on the dinner. So what are you waiting for? Come join the ISA today. We are we are ISA. ISA. The Warhawk Pantry is a resource not many people know about and is truly the hidden gem of Drumland. Recently, I got the chance to go to the pantry and talk to some of the staff. Here's what they had to say. Hello, my name is Peyton Walls, reporting for UWW-TV, and today I'm here at the Warhawk Pantry exploring some of the resources students have here on campus. The pantry provides a wide variety of food, including breakfast, lunch, and dinner options, a unique variety of drinks, and personal care items. They even have donated school supplies. The Warhawk Pantry can be used by all students and community members completely free of charge. I've noticed that at least what students have shared with me is when they have these resources, it helps them better prepare for the day. Even when students don't have time to get breakfast or a meal, they can stop by and utilize the pantry. I've noticed a lot of smiles and curiosity after they leave the pantry, and they always come back, so it's nice to see those regular faces. A food pantry is a resource that very few colleges can offer. The pantry also has an Amazon wish list that enables anyone to donate things students may want or need. But that's not the only donations the Warhawk Pantry receives. We get our donations from Feeding America, but we also get our donations from you guys, the students. From the purple bin located in the Warhawk Pantry in the back of Drumlin. Since winning the Border Regions Diversity Award, they could now afford this new technology. The pantry is home to one of the few flex farms on campus. Anything that grows will be donated to the Warhawk Pantry and other local food pantries. When I'm not working, there will be times where I actually utilize the pantry, so you will see um, workers also use it. I really like the fridge and freezer items. I think that's kind of what helps us stand out, because usually when we have a pantry, a lot of people think that we have shelf items, but it's nice that we can accommodate and have other items as well that are fresh and ready to take. The Warhawk Pantry is open Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 2.30 to 5.30 and Friday from 12.30 to 3.30. You are encouraged to go check it out for yourself as well as donate to the pantry. Reporting for UWW-TV News, this is Ben Peyton Walls. Thank you for that story, Peyton. That was mm -hmm. awesome. I really have never been in there, but now I'm going to take a chance to check it out. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't know it existed until my friend started working there. Mm -hmm. And she's like, hey, I work for the pantry completely mm -hmm. free of charge. Like, come in and like grab some stuff. Like why not right and oh, it's so cool but i just think it's awesome that mm -hmm. that resource is there yeah for people that can't go home over mm -hmm. spring break like you can go to the pantry and get the food and get the supplies you need and they don't only have food there they right. have so much more i know that they have a smaller pantry like that in the pride center and that's the one that i've been mm -hmm. to and seen but this one like with notebooks and with mm -hmm. like cleaning supplies i'm just like man i need to stop in there because yeah it's like a gut-wrenching feeling when you have like two pages left in a notebook and you know it's like monday night and you're not going to be able to go to like walmart or the dollar store anytime soon you're like I need something to get. Yeah, the fridge and freezer items are like my favorite. I made a pizza last night. I got Dang. some body wash the yeah. other day. Oh, it's, I love it so much. Right. It's a great resource. Yeah, and I feel like it's awesome that it's open to anyone, you know, like mm -hmm. with appointment or on the days that it's open. It just totally like gets rid of the shame factor yeah. of someone not having something. After the break, we'll take a look at this week in Wisconsin history to learn about the Yaden election. Stay tuned for more on the Whitewater Wind Down.
UWW TV has been an important part of the campus and community since 1980. Not only providing on-air learning opportunities for broadcast journalists and electronic media production students, but educating and entertaining our audiences with award-winning news, live sports coverage, original programming, as well as dedicating the mission to developing creative collaborations throughout campus. For more information, visit our website and like us on Facebook. Check us out because you got to see what's on UWW TV. Welcome to Jitters Coffee House. Located on the first floor of the Wells Towers, Jitters is a student-run coffee lounge and offers a variety of coffee and ice cream-based drinks and is home to many entertaining programs, including live music, gamer trivia nights, and other performances. Coordinate your activity by emailing jitters at uww.edu. Jitters is completely run by volunteers who can earn service hours and even receive a free drink during their shift. Stop in tonight at Jitters Coffee House, where fun events and community come together. Welcome to This Week in Wisconsin History. This week, we'll be covering the 1977 election of Jim Yadin, the state's first openly gay person to hold public office. On April 5, 1977, 26-year-old Jim Yadin was elected by public vote to a full-term seat on Madison City Council, the first openly gay public official in Wisconsin and only the fourth in U.S. history. The UW Law graduate had previously helped form the Gay Law Students Association on campus and was an early member of the Madison Alliance for Homosexual Equality, Wisconsin's first gay rights organization. Yaden later served on the Madison Equal Opportunities Commission, playing an integral part in reframing the city's Equal Opportunities Ordinance to include protection for Madison's LGBT community. In an October 1976 special election, Yaden was appointed by city council members to serve out the remainder of a resigning alder's term. He publicly came out in the local papers the next day. I wanted to be honest about, you know, I said, so I did an interview with the Daily Cardinal and I said, hey, there's two things that are important to me. I'm gay and I'm a vegetarian and I don't, I'm not trying to proselytize. I don't want everybody to be gay or be a vegetarian, just telling you who I am. And then everybody knew. Yadin ran for a full term in the general election six months later as an openly gay man. I gotta tell you, I had some wonderful people who ended up, you know, straight people who worked on my campaign, who lived in these dorms who had never actually met a gay person. They had no idea, you know, that there were such things. And they met me, they liked me, they helped me on my campaign. So I was really grateful for that. But um, so I won my two years, and there wasn't a quota. You know, I, I never had a gay agenda. I just wanted to be me and be honest. On Madison City Council, Yaden worked on projects such as health department reform, completion of the State Street Mall, decriminalization of marijuana, and the extension of bar hours until 2 a.m. The young alderman also fought against efforts to repeal the Equal Opportunities Ordinance he'd helped amend just years earlier. Throughout his term, Jim received many letters from closeted gay people across the country, seeking his support and advice. Even so, Yaden was still a common recipient of death threats. So many, in fact, that he kept a collection in a designated Threats on Life folder as evidence, in case anything ever happened to him. Jim Yadin resigned from Madison City Council just before the end of his term, and subsequently announced his retirement from politics, wanting to fully devote himself to his own law practice. He continued practicing real estate law out of Madison for over 30 years. Only five years after Yadin's historic 1977 election, Wisconsin became the first state to ban discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. Wisconsin has continued to elect openly gay candidates into public office, including Ricardo Gonzalez in 1989 as the nation's first openly gay Hispanic public official, and Tammy Baldwin in 1998 and 2012 as the first openly gay U.S. Congresswoman and Senator. And that's what happened this week in Wisconsin history. Living in Wisconsin is so strange mm -hmm. because we just went from like 
super nice, warm, awesome mm -hmm. weather. And then it was like a little bit chilly and then snow. And who knows what's going to happen now? Like I was really right. enjoying that nice weather. This yeah. always happens. Mm -hmm. It's like when just when you think spring is around the corner, it snows, mm -hmm. and then it's spring again, or is it? But I'm glad that it seems like we finally have mm -hmm. turned that corner and that the weather will hopefully be getting warmer and warmer. Maybe. <laughs> have you ever seen that meme where it's like, fall, winter, fall, fall, spring, <laughs> winter, right? actual spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's, it's so funny. Like what is... Where else yeah, besides like, Midwest is this like mm -hmm. that? Like looking back at my pictures of, from spring breaks from like all the years, you know, like elementary, mm -hmm. middle school, literally like somewhere I was outside, like in a little sundress, hanging yeah. out with my family. And then some it's like snowing and I'm inside. Oh so. my gosh. Okay. My family would do the cutest thing ever. So me and my siblings, we would all sit by the hot tub, like mm -hmm. in our swimsuits and like our hats and our sunglasses <laughs> every year on the same break for spring break. Mm -hmm. And some years it would be like a ton of snow yeah. and some years it would be super hot. Mm -hmm. And like, I just remember getting in my swimsuit, like walking out there and it being like a blizzard during oh spring gosh. break. Like, and then yeah. looking back on all those pictures, I just remembered that. Like that was so <laughs> cool. Wisconsin is a wild place. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully, though, we have turned that corner and we can mm -hmm. hang outside some more. Yeah, I always get way so, way happy when it's nice outside. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks like that is all the time that we're going to have today on this edition of the Whitewater Wind Down. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week for more news and entertainment. For Peyton and myself, have a fantastic week. And don't forget to stay tuned to UWW-TV.